Let's do this. Let's rock and or roll. Not both though. Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person whose fat bloody cat decided to use his claw to engage the kill switch on my PC while I was recording. 20 minutes of work just gone. I would say that he's in the doghouse or the cat equivalent, which is not the cat house because that is very different. I would say that he's in trouble. But he's my fluffy little baby and I can never be mad at him. Yes, you get to decide what list I double out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than X Incognito. And then there's a musical note at the end, so I'll give you one here. Thank you very much for your suggestion. In the spirit of Valentine's Day and all the lovey-dovey stuff that was going on, this person, X, wants to be completely opposite and goes on to talk about video game characters that you should never, under any circumstances, fall in love with. So we are here, we're in anti-Valentine's Day mode, because let's face it, on the calendar right now, we are as far away from Valentine's Day as we can be, so we're technically the furthest away that we are from love. This is getting depressing, so I'm just gonna skip to the joke of this section and change the lights. Now we had pink last time, what would be the anti Valentine's Day. It's not red, is it? That's too angry. I know what it is. Dan, just cut the lights. Just cut the lights out. Just put those eyes on that we had from the tech that we had last week. There we go. Just bob them around a bit. Don't worry, the whole list won't be like this. Thank you very much for your suggestions regardless, and welcome to this week's Choose Your Own Adventure, which is on eight video game characters that you should never fall in love with. And you know the drill by now. Turn the lights on, Dan. And you know the <laughs> drill by now. Say hi to me here in the live chat and put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. I tell you, I am not these intros out of the park. Goosh! Game! Let's get on with the list. Number eight, Far Cry 3, Citra. Now let's face facts, the Citra ending from Far Cry 3 was just a bit, um, weird. Actually, thinking about it, weird isn't even the right word for it. What is the word that I'm looking for? Dan, help me out with a few words here. Just chuck a few words over across my face. Nope, 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 nope. I'll, I'll actually just remember what it is. Uh, it was fucking garbage. Absolute hot garbage. Now, I'm sorry to those kinky freaks who enjoyed the whole, now that's not what I meant by double penetration ending, but aside from its immediate shock value, it is a really poor way to close out this otherwise brilliant game. I mean, just think about the choices that led you to this ending. It's not only do you have to actively betray all of your friends, you straight up murder your girlfriend who was the driving force behind your quest in the first place. I swear that the devs put this ending in as a joke to show players, no, no, don't throw away a long-term and healthy relationship for just a weekend fling. Because now you're dead, idiot, stupid heathen. I mean, what does it say about the player themselves who are willing to drop a long-term committed relationship in the most final of ways just to have a momentary blip of bliss with somebody you've just met? I know that Citra was gassing you up as being the chosen one of this land, but at the same time, mate, don't fall prey to somebody just giving you some positive affirmations. Come on, man, you're better than that. Number seven, Cole Phelps, L.A. Noir. I tell you, Dan, imagine the poor fools loading up L.A. Noir for the first time and thinking that Cole Phelps was a boring character. Can you imagine it? He can't. He can't imagine it. He looks like he's imagining it, but he can't imagine it. Now, to be fair, I think that we were all sufficiently gazumped by the shocking mid-game twist of Phelps' character arc, seeing as up until this point, he'd flown as straight as an arrow right into the hearts of criminals and those that do not respect the rule of hat. Uh, just for the record, the rule of hat is that if you shoot off Phelps' hat in combat, I will kill you in the most deadly of ways. Respect the hat. Yet there was an almighty glass-shattering moment that not only changed fan perception on Phelps, but actively saw a player decline at this point in the game, with many not finishing out the title because they hated the twist that much. Now this moment of course comes when Phelps decides to spend more than just an afternoon down at the Blue Moon with Elsa Lichtman. Now I remember playing this scene through and actively feeling like I'd skipped about 40 chapters in the book entitled What the Hell Are You Doing, Phelps, as suddenly you'd seen a character arc change direction so hard that you could legitimately sue for whiplash. Worse still, not only was Coles's affair made public by his toad of a partner in order to draw attention away from the corrupt police at the LAPD, but the actual affair itself was kind of delivered to the player in a truly off-handed manner. 
We didn't get to see the love affair start between him and Elsa. Instead, it was just kind of thrown at the player, just going, yeah, just you've got to accept this now. It's like, no, I'm sorry, but this love triangle between Cole, his wife, and this new woman, this is a love triangle that's stickier than the goddamn tar pits which feature in this game. I would like to know a little more, please. It was utterly crushing to see what seemed like the last good police officer fall to vice so very, very hard, to the point that many actually turned on Phelps for the rest of the game. Still, I guess more fool us for thinking that there was going to be a bastion of hope in the game titled L.A. Noir. I mean, Noir implies that it's going to be a case of moral ambiguity at best, so yes, be careful who you love is what I'm trying to say here. Number 6. Mass Effect 2 Morinth now, Mass Effect 2 made clear from the outset that this was going to be a game that focused on relationships. The trust that you would earn from your cast of misfits would be a slow and rocky path, but come the end of things, you'll be surrounded by people literally willing to die for you in order to save the fate of the universe. Now, I realise, Dan, at this point here that I'm reading a lot of it, uh, not actually presenting a bit more. Can you engage the eye technology again? I know that we've worked out a few kinks. I'm sure that nothing bad will happen this time, all right? So, here we go, and booting up now. The best part of this, though, was that the loyalty felt earned, that you'd actually gone out of your way to help your squad and in turn showed them that you were a commander to be trusted. Also, I'm sure that those sick dance moves also helped show them that you are not to be messed with. I mean, you could cut people with those shapes. Therefore, it was a rather confusing... Confusing to be presented with a romance party member option that on paper... Whoa, what is going on here? Dan, turn these off, turn these off. There is something very strange happening. Put them to a side. I hope that doesn't develop into a future story plot point. Therefore, it was rather confusing to be presented with a romance and party member option that on paper seemed like the worst idea possible. Say hello to Morinth, mother of Samara and all around Black Widow of the galaxy. Now, she is such a potent figure that no being alive has been able to mind meld with her and live to tell the tale. But then again, your Commander Shepard, you goddamn glorious bastard, so of course she's gonna let you pork her mind palace and you can escape unscathed, right? 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 Oh, very wrong. Yes, that's right, my friend. The game utterly and completely had your brain pants down here because no, you are not that special and yes, you are now dead. Which probably made for a rather humorous ending in which Morinth now has to sheepishly explain how you doomed all life in the galaxy just because your noggin couldn't handle her. And it's not like she didn't warn you either, so yeah, just for future reference, keep it in your brain pants. Number 5. Nearly any character from prequel video games I tell you this for none, it's gotta be a hard gig being a prequel video game character. As you're sitting there in your digital trailer going over your digital script, I'm gonna stop using the word digital, you know what I'm trying to do with this metaphor here. You're probably looking at the last page and just thinking, oh, I died at the end? Oh, how shocking. Come on, mate, it's what you signed up for. If you haven't appeared in the original game, then chances are you're dead, mate. So why the hell should we get invested in any of your actions or escapades? Surely video game developers must realise this by now, that by positing brand new characters in a time before the original title, that they're basically making us play a walking billboard that states, I die at the end, lol. I mean, we sure as hell know this, so who are they trying to kid? So save yourself a ton of heartache and don't even bother getting attached to these prequel losers, because chances are they're going to be peacing out hard by the end of the game. Number 4. Lance Vance, GTA Vice City and when it comes to betrayals and backstabbing, the Grand Theft Auto series is hard to beat, seeing as it routinely has you double-crossed by those slightly higher on the crime totem pole than you, and sometimes even gives you the opportunity to punch down and ruin the lives of others just for a few extra bucks. What's that? You'll give me a Staples gift card if I push my nan into oncoming traffic? That is disgusting, mate. That is gross. No. I don't shop at Staples. Make it an Amazon gift voucher and then we're, then we're talking, then we're talking, yeah, yeah. We'll make it out to cash, make it out to cash. I don't want to give you Bezos and Buxos. It's a franchise that basically teaches you that love and friendship are second to the almighty dollar and that you shouldn't trust people further than you can throw them off of a rooftop. Still, though, that didn't take any of the sting out of Lance Vance's betrayal in GTA Vice City, who turned on Tommy once a better offer was on the table. Now, it's a true shame because while the pair bickered back and forth like an old married couple, it always felt like they shared the same goal of sticking it to those that had wronged them in the past and thus were bonded forever. Plus, some of the missions the pair engaged in together were some of the best in the game, but unfortunately, that all came crashing down when Lance got a little too greedy and had to be cashed out permanently. Number 3. Robin and Marie – The Eleventh Hour What is it about puzzle-based video games and them having the 
most insane narratives going in gaming. I mean, Dark Seed, you've got uh, Harvester, you've got the Monkey Island games, Discworld games, all of them and more are just so utterly batshit. And of course, the 11th hour is no exception. Telling the tale of a haunted house that eats people to feed a demon living within it and impregnating others in order to birth willing accomplices to bring people back to said house, the 11th hour really doesn't pull any punches when it comes to a rather horrible setting. And that's before you even engage with the head-scratching puzzles that will have you completing tasks that feel totally out of sync with reality. Oh, and by the way, all of the cutscenes here, as you've probably guessed by now, are live action masterpieces. So you get a smorgasbord of excruciating pain that will make you beg for a three hour interpretive dance and screaming art house night just to take the edge off. And it's this detachment from sanity that also informs the characters of this game, all of which have an air of nastiness about them, and none of whom you should trust with your breakfast order, let alone your life. But seeing as Carl Denning, our man here, is in need of some loving, he's actually got some romantic choices that are scattered throughout the game, all of which inform the ending the player will get. Now, I won't lie to you, there's only a very slim chance that you'll get the good ending on this game in the first run, seeing as the two clear romantic choices presented, that of Robin and Marie, will lead to your eventual death death. And one of these is less surprising than the other, seeing as Marie is one of the aforementioned house babies now looking to get new victims in, so if you did choose her after knowing all that you do, you are an idiot. But Robin's ending sees you face down in the Hudson River, with her now being the prime suspect, which is more than a little shocking. And I say this because she was your romantic partner before the events of the game happened. So yeah, cheers Robin, thanks for giving me trust issues. Number 2. Lady D, Resident Evil Village now, the moment that Lady D from the outstandingly silly Resident Evil Village arrived on the scene, it awakened a wave of sensual longing that experts will, in years to come, describe as completely and utterly horrifying. The outpour of lusty comments, lewd drawings, and overall worship of this towering vampire was enough to drown people in. And yet, thanks to the internet doing what it does best and getting way ahead of itself, these droplets of drool fell upon a dusty desert of disappointment when the game finally dropped. For you see, Capcom, smelling pennies in the water, decided to lean hard into this new emerging and rather lucrative massive mommy market, and decided to turn all of the trailers and hype packages into ones focusing on her. But see, this was a bit of a disappointment for many players because, well, Lady D comes and goes pretty quickly in this game. She's only in it for like an hour and a half tops. In reality, Lady D's sections take up a relatively short amount of space in Village's runtime, and so many were actively disappointed when she was sent to the Great Beyond. Especially since the marketing had suggested that her involvement made up about 90% of the experience. In truth, the real experience was that of many strange broken hearts crying out on internet forums that their desired step on me sessions were more of a swift kick to the plums with steel toe capped boots. But it was likely a soundtrack that Capcom had on repeat as it counted its piles of pre order money. So, yeah, this is a cautionary tale of being careful who you lust after because, uh, well, in this case, we were thoroughly disappointed. And number one, those goddamn beans. Four guys. Okay, so I think it goes without saying that the weird little bean-bodied buddies that you play as in Four Guys are the most adorable things ever, right? Right? I mean, it feels like every aspect of their design has been surgically crafted to evoke that sense of aww from the player. From their dopey little legs, Baymax-like bodies, and cutesy expressions, these beans are so acutely cute that you could cut yourself on them were it not for their wibbly-wobbly bodies. But that said, though, these guys were the hammer because seriously, they are the bane of my bloody existence. Seriously, never trust a fella with a bean sticker on their laptop or school bag because they are social chameleons in disguise, my friend. I mean, they likely act all nice and friendly, but trust me, deep down, if they are deep into the full guy's experience, they are an expert in backstabbing and betrayal. Because that's all this game is, a prolonged exercise in dicking people over at the last minute, of grabbing tails, blocking exits, and making others fall to their deaths. It's horrible. And it's all packaged inside the butter wouldn't melt body of these beans. But trust me, butter would bloody melt because inside those bloody beans is a raging inferno of hell. Also a really horrible exoskeleton. Seriously, look at the pictures here. Gross. Ooh, get it out of my eyes. 
And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video game characters you should never fall in love with. I hope that you enjoyed that and found this life lesson of being careful with your heart useful in some form or another. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below and also put your suggestions for next week's episode down there as well. If you want to chat to me further on the social medias, you can do so by going over to Twitter or Instagram where I'm at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. You can check out all of the Warhammer miniatures that I've been painting up and you can follow Dan over here on his social medias as well. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we spoke today about video game characters that you should never fall in love with, there is one person out there that you should definitely love a little bit more each and every day, and that is yourself. You should treat yourself with love and kindness because you deserve the best. And we only get one shot on this planet, this one shot at life. So let's try and make it the healthiest and happiest one that we can by starting each day with affirmation that we deserve love, we deserve the best things in life, and that we are a big ledge. And I know that you are. I know that you are. So go out there, treat yourself with love and respect as well as your neighbour, and let's start building bridges instead of burning them, my friends. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.